All right, hello guys, and welcome to your weekly forecast from the 29th of September until the 6th of October. Yep, this one's going to get us into October, so we are going to be talking a little bit about that earlier portion of October during this video. But before we get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias, especially the Instagram, which has been doing excellent. And that's how you send in viewers sending photos, by the way. I'm going to be doing those at the end, so stay tuned for that. Now, we're going to be doing a little bit of a segment here where we're going to be reviewing our previous week's temperature forecast. I can't find data that's very recent on precipitation, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that. But the temperature forecast, I will be able to review, and I want you guys to comment down below what you thought of how we did last week based off of what you're about to see. So right now, we're looking at the data from... This is up until this is the seven day forecast before the 29th of September. So this should go Sunday to Sunday. So take a good look at it. And now we're going to switch right now. And you can probably see that it does look quite nice. I take I took a look at it earlier and I, I, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, obviously, it's a weekly forecast. So it is a little bit medium range. So it is a little bit hard to do. There is slight inaccuracies with probably what shade I should have put in certain areas, but I mean, nothing to complain about here in my opinion, but you guys take a look and let me know in the comments what you thought. Now, to get into this week's forecast, again, 29th till the 6th, we're going to be starting out with our precipitation forecast. A lot going on here. There's three, er or actually four areas of below average precipitation and then one big area of above average precipitation. So just to show you guys where those four areas of below average precipitation is. We have one there for northern New Hampshire and Maine, one there for Colorado through Utah into Nevada, and then one there for the coasts of Washington and Oregon. You can see we even get a medium shade there of that brown, meaning we're going to get a little bit more chance of dry air for those regions as well. We have our fourth area of dry air there for the southeastern United States and the deep south. And we also get into our medium shade of brown there as well for the southeast. And I know that's pretty disappointing news, but if you watch my October forecast, you do know that we are expecting to see above average precipitation for the month of October. So it won't stay dry forever, you guys. I promise we will be seeing precipitation at some point and an above average amount actually at times. Now for our above average precipitation, we see from the Rockies through to the Dakotas in the Great Lakes and then a little bit there of the four corner states in the central states. We do see our lightest shade of green there, which again is where we're expecting slight chance at above average precipitation. And then in your medium green, we're expecting a moderate chance at above average precipitation. Pretty good chance. And then in that dark green, we have a little sliver that goes through a little bit of Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and then into Wisconsin as well. That's where we're expecting very, very high confidence in above average precipitation. Now, moving on to your temperature forecast, this one's easy. We have two areas of temperature differences here. For the West and specifically the Northwest, we have below average temperatures. Again, we bring out all three shades here light blue from the four corner states up through to the Dakotas and anywhere west of there. And then your medium shade of blue for a lot of the interior regions of Washington, Oregon, California, and then a lot of those Rockies as well. And and then we even have our third shade of blue there for the northern Rockies as well as some interior regions again in the Pacific Northwest. And it's been quite cold there and we're dealing with a lot of snow for a lot of areas there as well. Matter of fact, two of our viewers sent in photos are from Browning, Montana, where they got extreme amounts of snowfall, which is super exciting. So stay tuned for that at the end. It's super, super cool. I was taking a look earlier. Now we're going to go ahead and get into our special note segment of the video, starting out with special note number one, blizzard for Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming here, and a little bit of Utah there maybe even, but for the most part, mostly Montana is being impacted by this one where we've seen such heavy snowfall. Again, I know areas just to the east of those northern Rockies got the, the most snowfall, but throughout the western portion of Montana, we've seen extreme amounts of snowfall, especially for this time of year, but I mean, even... Even for any time of year, we've, we've seen extreme amounts of snowfall, even for Montana. So again, two of those photos are from this blizzard, and this will be ending by tomorrow. And then we will have to worry about the cold air that's going to set in and probably won't see a lot of melting for a lot of areas. Now your second special note, again, I know it's bad news, but southeast remains dry. Louisiana up through the minute into some of the southern Appalachian Mountains into some of the mid-Atlantic states as well. We're going to be seeing things remain dry. I think 
it's probably been about two weeks in a row before this one we've had below average precipitation for these areas and almost no precipitation with the exception of a few select areas but I mean it's gonna stay dry through this week like I said but I saw where around the 8th of October we might see a big storm system come through and bring a lot of areas precipitation so there is some good news on the horizon and again in my October forecast I am calling for above average precipitation. And for your special note, number three, we have below average temperatures or cold temperatures there for the northwestern United States. Again, you saw that on my temperature forecast. We are experiencing uh, a pretty decent shot, almost 100% chance that we will be seeing below average temperatures in this region. And for some of those select regions, it'll be, you know, cold, almost frigid for a lot of areas, especially high elevations in the areas that have dealt with this blizzard uh, it's going to be very cold throughout the week. I think the only time I can see a possible pattern switch is right around the 4th or 5th. You might start to warm up a little bit in these regions, but with the exception of those last day or two, I mean, for the most part, we're looking at very, very cold temperatures for this region of the United States. Uh, special note number four, warmer temperatures there for the southeastern United States as well. Some of those east central states from Texas up through Missouri, some of the southern Great Lakes states, and down through into the coastal states, we're dealing with warmer than normal temperatures. And this is going to lead to really hot temperatures in some regions, especially, obviously, the deep south where you average a higher temperature. You'll be dealing with, you know, some pretty hot temperatures down there. Uh, also, I wanted to mention you can see that it stays off the coast a little bit where the very, very coastal regions don't really get into the the far above average temperatures. This is because the the water temperatures are actually going to keep you quite moderated as far as temperatures. That's a lot of something that people don't know. Uh, is your temperatures of the water is really going to influence the air temperature. So it can it's really going to influence these temperatures and lead it to not really get too hot, uh, too much hotter than the water temperature is. That is so you you can see the water influence areas like this. And it's the same story in the winter time, like when extreme cold heads over your area and you notice that the coastal regions stay a little bit warmer or maybe even they have mixing issues during a snowstorm, that's because the water temperature is actually helping to keep things warmer in those types of situations. Special note number five, and this one's from the 4th through the 6th of October. And again, uh, I wanted to mention this one is a little bit of a lower chance because the models have been hinting at the potential for a snowstorm for these regions during this time frame, but it is a little bit far out. So I'm just mentioning the potential for this to possibly happen, but it's not you know necessarily something that I'm I'm like, oh, there's a snowstorm coming. I'm not that confident yet, but I did want to mention that the models are showing this and there is the potential that we're going to be talking about a snowstorm as we head later into the week. And that would be an interesting way to start October out. The same way we ended September, obviously, it most likely will not be as large as our most previous winter storm for these regions. But it would be interesting to see continued snow for these regions. And that's what I'm calling for in my October forecast as well. Continued snow for those regions. Now for your photo feature segment of the video, I wanted to mention again how these rules work. Just real quick, you can follow our Instagram in the description and pinned comment and if you tag us in photos that were taken that week that have something to do with weather we're going to be sharing three of those every single week if it again if it was taken during the week and for the monthly forecast we'll be sharing our favorite from the entire month that was sent in for the weekly forecast now our first one comes from browning montana again like i said and look at all this snowfall guys this has to easily be over 18 or 20 inches by this point. I know they ended up getting far more, especially in drifts, but look at how beautiful it looks on all those trees. Just an extreme amount of snowfall. Again, they're somewhere in between one and two feet, probably closer to two feet and maybe even a little bit above at this point, but you can clearly see it's still snowing and they did receive more than that. So this was probably just a little bit earlier in the snowstorm. I know they were receiving multiple inches of snow per hour, which is just super, super cool. Our next one also comes from Browning, Montana. Sorry, it's vertical, so it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see this is a snow drift up against the back of a car, and it looks like maybe they tried to dig it out or the wind was so extreme that it actually uh, blew the snow away from parts of the car, but that's just a beautiful snow drift. You can see that's probably a five or six foot snow drift right there and just super cool stuff. I can't wait to see more viewers send in photos in the coming weeks and coming months during snowstorms. I just think this is such a cool idea. And when we have major snowstorms, like when we're getting more and more viewers sending photos, because I think we're going to start getting more, obviously, as it catches on. But as we 
as it catches on, I think when we have winter storms during the winter, I might even do more than just three for specific snowstorms or maybe even make a video dedicated just for it. So that would be super duper cool. And then our third one, this one actually won the monthly, our, Oct our September photo of the month. Uh, and, and this one is a rainbow behind an airliner there at Billings Logan Nash International Airport there. And that was just such a beautiful photo. I love how like the back of the plane has a little bit of a sun logo there and it's just so colorful. And then we also see the rainbow. So that was just an awesome, awesome picture. And what an awesome view with the plane there right in front of the rainbow. Anyway, guys, make sure to send in your photos this week. Again, I'm going to be picking three and you maybe even have the chance to have the best photo of the entire month if it's sent in in October. If it's sent in in September, it can't win the October photo of the month, obviously. But if it's sent in after October, it also has a chance to win the photo of the month. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.